Hello everyone. Welcome to Software Testing Help. I'm Sharmila and in this session we'll see how to automate mobile native application on Android device. Now we'll discuss how to perform automation on a real-time mobile device and on an emulator. When I say real-time mobile device, I'll uh, connect the device with the system using USB cable and we'll see how to perform automation on this real-time mobile device and an emulator in the sense I will create a virtual device with certain configurations. So this virtual device I will create either with using AVD uh, that is the Android virtual device manager or by using Jenny motion and we'll see how to perform automation on this virtual device as well. So I'll be explaining automation in these two devices in parallel. Let's get started now. To perform automation, these will be the basic steps. First, you connect the real-time mobile device or you create a virtual device and then you install the application on that particular device. Get the device name, application details with which you'll set the initial configuration for APM. So once the initial configuration is set, then you are um, free to proceed with automation on the native app. You interact with the elements and then you execute the test cases. And now I'll start with creating a virtual device. After that, I'll uh, connect the real-time mobile device. Now to create a virtual device, you can use AVD Manager from Android SDK bundle, but AVD Manager is quite slow for me, so I'm opting for Jenny Motion. Just open Jenny Motion software. And here I already have a virtual device created with certain configurations, so I just need to launch this. I click on Start and this particular device will get launched. So here you can see the virtual device is launched. This is similar to your mobile device. You will have applications, widgets. So whatever you do on your mobile device, you can do on this virtual device as well. Now in order to confirm that my system is able to recognize this emulator, I just type in ADB devices. And here it is listing out one device that is attached. There is one device that I have created now. So this is going to be the device name for the emulator. Just note it down. I just wrote it down in notepad like this. Next, I'm going to connect my real-time mobile device to the system. So the connection is made and you can see the mobile device. I have just displayed it using remote control. And now when I try to run the ADB devices command, it should show two devices in the list because I have a real-time device connected and I have an emulator. Okay, so now you can see I have two devices listed. So this corresponds to the device name of the real-time device and the second one corresponds to the emulator name. Okay, so have this device name noted because we'll be using this for automation. So now that my system has recognized the devices, next I should install application on this devices so that I can perform automation on it. Now I'm going to install two different applications in these devices so that you will not be confused between the two devices. So for the uh, real-time device, I will go for a Walmart application that has to be installed. And for the emulator, I'm going to select IRCTC application. Now in order to install an application on the device, how do we do it? We should have the APK file in the system and using this, we'll uh, start the installation process, right? So first, let me get this APK file for both the applications. I'm just downloading the APK file for Walmart and IRCTC. Now I have my APK files downloaded in the local machine. So let me proceed with the installation process. Now first I'm going to install Walmart on the real-time mobile device. So I'll just proceed with the installation process on this device. Generally, how do we do it? We go to the particular location where the APK file is placed. So I go to the location where my APK files are placed. And here we'll call the command saying adb install followed by the apk file name. So if it is Walmart, I'll say walmart.apk. But in this case, I'm getting an error saying more than one device on emulator, which means that my system is confused between two devices because at this point of instance, I'm having a real-time mobile device as well as an emulator connected. So this is my real-time mobile device as well as an emulator. So when I say ADB install, it is not able to recognize on which particular device it should carry this installation process. So I should specify the device name after ADB and only then the installation process will be a success. So I say ADB hyphen S, which means that the serial number of the device, that is the device name. And here I give the device name. So I want to do it on a real-time device. I'll give the real-time device name. And then I say install followed by the APK file name. So it is walmart.apk. Okay, so this application, I'm just installing it in this particular device that is nothing but my real-time mobile device. The installation is in progress. 
now you can see that the application is installed in the mobile device and i got a success message so now that my application is installed in the device next i should get the application details like package name and activity name so in order to get that we run a shell command saying adb shell but in this case when i say adb shell again my system is getting confused because it is reading two devices for now so i should specify the device name on which i'm trying to run the shell command so i say adb hyphen s followed by the device name so this is my device name i just copy the device name pass it over here and then i pass the command called shell okay so always have this in mind whenever you are having more than two devices connected specify the device name after adb so adb hyphen s then give your device name whatever device name it is and then uh, follow the command that you would like to perform on the device so this applies to all the adb commands always specify the device name after adb and then mention the action to be performed okay so now uh, i've specified the shell uh, shell command has to be run on this particular device so let me run the shell command so before uh, passing the shell command over here i should have my application open i'm opening the application now i'm passing the shell command here so here in the response you can see the activity name and the package name just copy this and paste it in notepad so the text before hash will be your package name again the text after hash is going to be your activity name that's it so you have activity name package name and device name ready for your mobile device so the same will follow for the virtual emulator device also so let us install irctc application on the emulator and we'll get the application details for that particular irctc app so first what you do you verify whether your emulator is getting identified so you say adb devices and you see your emulator getting listed and once it is done go to the particular location where your apk is placed so my is placed in d colon and here run the adb command so generally we say adb install but this is not going to work because i have more than one device connected at this point of time so when i say adb install dot apk it will throw an error so instead of giving adb install i should specify the device name along with the adb command so this is my device name for my emulator so i just copy the device name and here i pass it in the command and then i call the install irctc.apk and now the installation is in progress so what happened was that i just went to this particular path where the apk file is placed and then i call the install command so this in turn is getting or is installing that particular application in my emulator so let me check in the emulator whether i have irctc now yeah so the installation was a success and i have my app installed here so now i have my app ready let me get the application details like package name and activity name so for that i should run the shell command so i say adb shell will i say it like this no i should say adb device name and then call the shell command only then my system will be able to recognize on which particular device i'm trying to run this command so i say adb hyphen s device name and then shell so here is where i'm going to run the shell command now in order to get the application package name and activity name of that particular app first open the app in your uh, emulator have it opened and then run the command so just give enter now here you have in the response the package name and activity name just copy it and paste it in notepad so the text before slash is going to be my package name and the text after slash is going to be the activity name so now i have the device name activity name package name for both my real time device and the mobile device ready so now i'm uh, i'm um, ready to go with automation so let me set the initial configuration for this device with apm okay so this part we already discussed how to set the initial configuration so i'll just give you a very short or quick uh, overview um, so if you want to uh, run it on a virtual device so uh, here you just specify your virtual device name so it is it will be this device name in this case so it's going to be 192 if you want to run it on an emulator and my emulator in this case is an android device and then the browser name is android because i'm going to perform automation on a native app and this version of the android i got it from the emulator itself just go to the emulator click on menu 
select system settings and here select about phone and here you have your android version 4.3 and about the app package name and activity name we already got that so i just passed those over here so this is for the emulator when you want to do it for your mobile device just change the device name to your mobile device name over here and also change the other parameters like android version uh, package activity name package name etc okay so that's the difference so now i'll show you how to interact with the elements in the native app uh, just consider this application walmart um, so in this case my uh, test case is going to be a failure login scenario so for that i just click on this menu i click on sign in uh, i give some uh, invalid username password likewise and i click on sign in here and here i should get a login failure message so that is going to be my test case so in order to um, proceed with the test case execution first i should try to interact with these elements so let me recognize these elements first for that i have a tool in android sdk bundle just go to android sdk bundle tools and you have something called ui automator viewer just run this batch file and that particular tool will get opened now this tool is used to inspect the ui components on the android app what you have to do is just click on this uh, icon and it will take screenshot of the device so in this case we have two devices uh, connected to the machine one is the emulator another one is the realty mobile device so select the device on which you want the screenshot to be taken so my screenshot has to be taken on the realty mobile device so i select this realty mobile device i click okay and you can see i have the screenshot ready so in the left pane i have the screenshot and in the right pane i have certain details related to the element as and when i hover on particular element you can see the details are getting populated in the right pane so you can uh, see that this is like inspect element of firebug if i click on one of the elements you can see that its properties are loaded it's a property name like class text resource id and here you have the structure where that particular element is located in the xml and one more thing to note is that this is not a dynamic or a live uh, session whenever i make changes in my mobile device that is not going to reflect in the tool you have to take screenshot for every change that you take or every change that you make and only then it gets reflected okay so this you have to note it down now consider if you want to take screenshot of your emulator then click on this icon select the emulator emulator device name and click on okay like this now let me go back and take screenshot of uh, the real time mobile device itself so basically this is just a snapshot with extra features you click on that particular element and you have properties listed in your right pane uh, so we will uh, discuss about how to identify these elements with various locators like xpath id class name index text and all the next session so in this session i hope you understood how to handle when, when multiple devices are connected to the system and an overview of the ui automator tool um, thank you